Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking specifically about um, the chess lesson for ever the chess lesson of accident, mistake, blunder uh, that applies to every single 2020 U.S. Democrat primary U.S. presidential election candidate, and um, specifically, we're going to be talking about how this applies to all of them and how once you understand this lesson it really means that we should have more sympathy and more patience and more respect for every single one of these democrat candidates it's it's really critically important all right so let's talk about it all right so um i play uh, lee chess which is the the very best chess application you can get online that prepares me to play more over the board games uh, that's, you know, actually playing uh, live opponents. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also a member of the Franklin Mercantile um, Chess Club in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, it's in, like, essentially, like, the French Quarter within within Philadelphia. Uh, it's, it's really... Um, so chess is a really important game. But I know that, I know that everybody makes analogies to chess and, and that at this point it's been done so frequently that, that it has the chance of being cliché. But one of the reasons why cliches are cliches is that they ring so true. And the reality is there really are an incredible amount of life, life lessons that can be applied to many, many uh, important things that we do as human beings. And so it's really, so I just want to take a minute and explain why we have this situation where uh, specifically, um, yeah, so take a minute and explain why we have this this situation where we need to be watching for how these Democrat U.S. presidential primary candidates um, map onto the accident mistake blunder lesson, okay? All right, so let's, let's talk about it, okay? So basically in chess, whenever you make a move, okay, you, your move has the possibility of be, when you make a misplay, when you, when you don't do when you do not make a move that benefits you that that can that gets that gets measured at three different levels accident mistake and blunder and i'm going to explain them to you so accident is when you make a move in chess and it was not your best possible move okay now it's argue and and that and that comes from the computer has uh, has played a million different games and the computer is saying hey if you'd made this move you know, 55% of all opponents would win with this move over this move, right? And so it says, the move that you made, it only wins 45% of the time, right? That's not your best possible move. If you had made this other move instead, that would have been a better move. So an accident is when you simply don't make your best possible move according to the known state, right? Like basically... Uh, this, you know, the game you're playing has been played before. That move has been seen. It's been calculated out to see how many games in a thousand could be won or lost, right? And the computer can do those kind of calculations, right? So it's the, what is the best? So basically an accident is when you have made a move, but you have not made your best possible move, okay? It, it is not a terrible thing, and, it, and you really absolutely can make several accidents in a game and still win. Right, uh, actually, you know, f- frequently win because you're either playing an opponent who's not as skilled as you, or there's another path that you can find. Okay, so an accident is simply not making your best possible move. Okay, now let's talk about a mistake. A mistake is very critical uh, in chess. When you make a mistake, you have made a. Um, a, mo- a oh, and let me give you a, a, a mo- uh, an example of an accident in in chess is. Like you bring up your king's pawn rather than your queen's pawn, right? Uh, even that opening could there might be uh, you know um, people would say okay, well king's pawn wins more more frequently than queen's pawn, that kind of thing, right? That's an act. No, you haven't lost any. You're literally just losing position. You haven't even lost any 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 pieces. That's an accident, all right? Now let's talk about a mistake. A mistake is when you make a move that changes you from a winning position to an even position, right? So you were winning, right? You had one or more pawn, you had taken one or more pawns, or you had even taken a principal piece, right? A rook, a bishop, a knight, right? 
let's not bring in the queen into it at this point. Uh, we're not there. I mean, queen, queen is not really concerned at the mess state level generally. Okay. All right. So here's the issue, right? You have this. Uh, you're moving forward and, and you're doing what you can, right? And uh, basically, a good example of a mistake is when your bishop is taken without retribution, okay? Uh, in chess, uh, pieces have different point values. A pawn has one point value. Uh, a, a bishop or a bishop or a, a knight is three points. A rook is four points, and the queen is nine points, okay? The king has no point value. When the king is, is trapped, the game is over, okay? So the queen is incredibly valuable. Bishops and rooks are equal. Uh, bishops and knights are equal, and rooks are a little more important, right? So, so here's the issue, right? If you make a mistake, you would have your bishop taken without retribution, which means somebody takes your bishop and you don't take their bishop in return, or you don't take their knight in return, right? You don't take something of equal value on the very next turn, right? That's without retribution. This is very bad. You're three points behind right now, right? So at this point, but you could still win the game, right? You could still win the game. There's a path, but it's very bad. It's frightening when it happens for a player, okay? Last is a blunder, okay? A blunder is the game that lo is the move that loses you the game um, figuratively, but not literally, okay? So basically a blunder is when you make a, a mistake so bad that it's almost impossible for you to return from that mistake. The, you're not in checkmate, but checkmate is only a few moves away, and you have all but sealed your fate. You have less than 10% chance of winning the game because you've made a mistake that is so bad, okay? All right, now a good example of this is, let's say you have a knight, and you're moving your knight up. There's a really powerful move in chess where you, you move a knight in, up into a specific position. The... Um, the, your opponent would have their king and their rook on the back row. You fork, right, the king. So you put the king in check, and the uh, opponent's going to have to move their king one space, and then you jump over the, you jump over and onto the back line, right, and take their rook. It's powerful. It's really powerful, right? And players are always looking for it, like to do this king rook fork right and so like let's say you have a knight out and you 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 you're one move away from your king rook fork and you're you're mo you're moving you're maneuvering and you're ready to do what you need right to really slam your opponent in, you know just give them a swift punch in the mouth right and and basically at that point you look over and your opponent takes your queen with a pawn right and you're like oh my gosh i didn't even see that i was so focused on defeating my opponent that I didn't realize my queen was was endangered and I lost my queen. This is a blunder. You lose a queen uh, and the opponent hasn't lost their queen in a game, most good opponents will just absolutely wreck you. You're finished, right? So this is a blunder. This is A blunder is when you make a mistake that is so significant, you, you've almost certainly sealed your own fate with your, with your mistake. That's a blunder, right? So an accident, you, you've missed your best move. A mistake, you've made a move that took you from a winning position, right? Winning, <coughs> winning the game to even, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, okay. And then blunder is when you've made a critical mistake where you've all but sealed your own fate and it's about a 90% or more chance you're about to lose, okay? Within a few moves. So... Excuse me. Okay, so so basically, let me explain now. What does this mean in politics? Well, the first thing we need to realize is every single one of us, right, as American citizens, we need to have more respect and more sympathy and more thankfulness to every U.S. Democrat presidential 2020 uh, candidate, right? And the reason why is every single time they make a move, right, when they talk to the press, when they choose a location for their tour and choose another location and, and 
And when they choose a location for their tour, they're saying, on this time and date, I will not be in this other place, right? Everybody looked back at Hillary and said, what, what the heck? You know, you, you chose your locations poorly. She made mistakes with the with the locations that she took she she chose for where she would visit during her campaign, right? In addition to that, every time you make a policy choice, every time you, you do not define what your policies is, every move you make has a possibility of being an accident, a mistake, or a blunder, right? And this can be seen incredibly clearly in very specific points in time in America, both recent and in the past. So let's, so I'm going to give you an example right now of every single one of these accident, mistake, and blunder. All right. Accident. We saw a very good example of an accident recently with Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang came out and said, guess what? UBI stacks with social security. So you'll get your social security and you'll get your UBI, right? This was an accident. It was not his best move, right? And basically the reason why is now it does look like in this circumstance, especially when it comes to senior citizens, that Andrew Yang is a is a populist. He's, he's giving to the people, not because the people need, but because uh, he knows that giving more will give the... Um, will give the American people, give it, will give a subsection of the American people in this circumstance, senior citizens, more, uh, more money, right? So it's essentially, it's as close as you can get to buying votes. I'm not saying Andrew Yang's buying votes, but this is about as close as you can get, right? And here's the thing. I think, you know, the better play, the better play would have been Andrew Yang being patient and saying, listen, senior citizens, I know you're like, hey, I worked hard for my social security, I want my social security, and how dare you not give me the UBI as well, right? But the reality is, one, senior citizens should not get UBI and social security. It's a bad, bad idea. It means, you know, it, it is. it just means we're gonna give, 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 give. We're not giving, like uh, Andrew Yang choosing to give $12,000 a year, $1,000 a month, that is a very carefully chosen amount. He is saying, this is enough to make sure you're never hungry. This is enough sure to make sure that you have nice clothes. This is enough for you to pay for your pet's food, right? But you're gonna struggle to get um, to get shelter. You'll have to combine your money with other people to get shelter, or you'll have to get a uh, shelter that's certainly not the best shelter available, right? It's not, it's not a just rain money down on you amount, right? But Social Security and UBI, that is, right? That's too much. It, it is, it is not fiscally responsible in my opinion. Now I have incredible sympathy for Andrew Yang for making this. And the reason why I think he made it is the American senior citizens to any politician, to any candidate in an election race, in a primary race, it's terrifying. And the reason why is, um, basically senior citizens are like the inverse of the young, right? Essentially at the macro, there was a study recently that said, um, four out of five young people don't vote that are eligible, which totally makes sense. I've seen this myself, right? And, uh, e even with my own kids, right? Like they're not, they're just not that like, it's just not that important to them that they vote. Right. But senior citizens are the inverse. It's like four out of five citizens, senior citizens do vote. Right. I don't know what the, I haven't seen a poll, a poll on that, but I know from the fact that every that every single day of my life that I've followed politicians, no politician ever goes against the senior citizens. And they know if they do, the senior citizens will karate chop them in the face, right? Like at the polls, right? They will just utterly destroy them in the polls. Not, not at, the, at, the, at the polling place where you vote, right? They will vote them out. Like senior citizens do not mess around. When it comes to voting, senior citizens are like the Venn diagram is almost a complete overlap. Virtually every senior citizen votes. It's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And so every politician is terrified of him. And I think uh, Andrew Yang's recent decision was fear based, right? He was he was terrified that the senior citizen would not understand what he was trying to do for UBI. So he just he iced an already iced cake, right? Now what should he have done? Well, he should have done, what he should have done was went to the senior citizens and, and it, this would have taken time. It would have taken weeks or months to get this story out and said, listen, you're not going to get UBI and, uh, and, um, social security. 
I know you want that, and I know, and it would be easier for me, it would be easy for me to tell me to for me to tell you that you're going to get it. But the reason why we're not going to give that to you, reason why we're going to keep it moving, and and do a much more physical, fiscally responsible action, is that the twelve thousand dollars is going to every living adult, American adult between eighteen and sixty-five. Right now, you already have problems as senior citizens. Where you're taking care, of, some of you are, t are are raising children that aren't that are your children's. Some of you are literally raising your own grandchildren, right? Well, those parents are going to have every single one of the parents, the you know the mother and the father uh, of of your grandchildren are now going to have twelve thousand dollars extra each to to care for those children. And even if they don't take care for those children directly, maybe some of that money is going to flow to you, right? Uh, maybe not all of it, but some of it. And and the reality is, though, you know, even if your children have no children, right? To senior citizens who have kids, he could say, listen, even if your kids have no kids, right? Uh, uh, your kids at least have twelve thousand. That there's they're not at zero anymore. You don't have to do everything for them, right? And uh, and this these are adult children I'm talking about, right? So like the reality is, everybody in your life is going to have more resources, and you guys can take a breath and stop, you know, stop not only taking care of all of your needs and all of your concerns, but even caring for your own children, giving them money, and even caring for your grandchildren, giving them money, because your children are going to have every single one of your children is going to have twelve thousand extra dollars a year. So. That's where you will see a break, right? That's a better, more responsible approach. It's a much better, much more responsible approach. Andrew Yang didn't do that. I have an incredible amount of sympathy. And I have respect for him because, like, I, you know, I know why he's doing this. He doesn't want to get, he doesn't want his opponents to leverage the senior citizen vote against him, which is very, very easy to do, right? All you have to do is just frighten the senior citizens. It's been done a million times before. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. All right, let's talk about a mistake, right? Uh, now, actually, just to be clear, that accident, that doesn't, that really doesn't hurt um, Andrew Yang's chances. Maybe one to three percent chance, right? The shift, right? It's no big deal. He's still got a million different, he's still got a thousand different paths to win the game, right? All right, so here's the issue. Mistake, right? Very clear mistake recently. Elizabeth Warren said, I will not go on Fox town hall huge mistake this is a mistake right one it remind it, it is a cry to the skies i am hillary clinton right basically elizabeth warren is saying if somebody doesn't like what i have to say or if somebody's opposed to my views i'm i don't even deem them worthy of communication right and that's what hillary did there's a whole bunch of states she didn't care about a whole bunch of states and different locations she knew she wouldn't poll well and and she never went right and then she she gave her classic now you know uh line basket of deplorables howard stern right uh howard stern begged her to come on his show he's on a tour a book tour right now and he's talking about it he's like if she had just come i think i think she could have directly talked to the five or ten percent of the people, certainly the five percent. He's got thirty million viewers, right? And he's like, I could have brought millions of views, right? Uh, I could have brought millions of, of views and given her a chance to win over some of those deplorables. Howard Stearns knows that the basket of deplorables. By the way, I'm using that term as the group of people that she identified. I do not identify them as deplorables, but you know, Howard Stern was saying, "Hey, the basket of deplorables is with me. Talk to them, win them, right?" And as a politician, you must do that. And now Elizabeth Warren's going, no, nope, I don't need to do that. Uh, I don't like Fox News. I think they're, you know, they they support fascism and they f support 15 other things that I don't like. And so I'm not going to talk to them, right? This is absolutely a critical mistake for a politician. A politician cannot say, I can't win that group. I'm not going to talk to that group. I don't deem them necessary for communication. Communication is the primary tool of a politician, right? The moment Elizabeth Warren said she would not go on Fox News, she said, guess what? She pointed directly at Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, who had knocked it out of the park when they went, went on Fox News and said, these two have more courage. These two have more confidence. These two are better communicators. These two are more committed to winning this election 
than me. I am lesser than Bernie Sanders. I am lesser than Pete Buttigieg. They have already proven and done something I am not capable or willing to do, right? It is an absolute critical mistake, classic mistake. Uh, you, As a politician, your primary tool is communication. You cannot cut people out. This is a complete echo of the basket of deplorables mistake, and it makes... Uh, it makes Elizabeth Warren look like Hillary Clinton, which is the last thing she needs, right? It was a very bad mistake. This was a bishop getting taken from her without retribution, right? It's bad, bad, bad move. Blunder, right? There is only one, like when you talk about a blunder in American politics, there is one blunder that is the absolute perfect example of what happens with a blunder and how a blunder works. And I'm going to tell it to you right now, right? So here you go. Uh, basically, um, oh, the Howard Dean scream. It's the years 2004. George, uh, George Bush is running for his second election. And this is after 9-11, right? And Howard Dean was a uh, Democrat candidate. He was making great progress. And actually he won and he was celebrating and he started listing off these states. And he was like, and we're going to go to Maine. And we're going to go to Florida. And we're going to go to Texas. And we're going to go to And he did this thing. It's called. It's now called the Dean Scream. It's fair, famous in American politics. And in front of the entire nation, right? This thing was put out on every news channel. Howard Dean lost control of himself, right? He lost control of himself. And his celebration looked like hysteria right? And it ruined him. It absolutely ruined him. He had already made some some critical mistakes, but this was the blunder. This was the loss of the queen, and he could not recover from it. That is accident, mistake, blunder. We as American citizens need to understand that every politician, every 2020 uh, U.S. Democrat primary candidate right now, every time they make a move, every time they open a front, their mouth in front of a microphone, every time they choose um, where they're gonna where they're gonna campaign. Every time they make a policy choice, every time they don't make a policy choice, they risk accident. They risk mistake. They miss blunder. It is incredibly stressful. Incre- it, it takes a toll on your body and your mind. And I could say it as an evangelical Christian. I think it takes a, a toll on your spirit, right? Because you are under constant scrutiny. And so we as American American voters and American citizens, we need to have, and so I'll say it now, thank you very much, Tulsi. Thank you, Andrew Yang. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you to, uh, you know, Cory Booker. Thank you to Julian Castro. Thank you to Amy Klobuchar. Thank you to Marianne Williamson. Thank you to uh, John Hickenlooper. Thank you to John Delaney. Thank you to uh, to every single one of these these brave men and women who are doing something that we're not, and we need to have more respect and more sympathy for them. That is my opinion about the the chess lesson of accident, mistake, and blunder. What do you think? Did I miss any examples of accidents, mistakes, or blunders? Have you seen politicians make an accident or mistake or a blunder? Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium. Thank <laughs> you.